what is important, you get the Stephen Namias is the author, and this is the sixth edition of production and operation analysis. So don't be confused if the, uh, if the cover is different, because the content should be exactly the same. OK, then we can continue with the induction uh, proofs. And we have shown, uh, or first we have an hypothesis, we have a formula which we think is correct for the sum of the n first integer numbers. We have found out that this is correct for the basic condition when n is equal to 1. And then we can assume that it's co it is correct for one particular number k. So now the next step is to find out what will happen if we increase by 1 from this number k. So let's now again try to look at the number 4 here, so we have a bit more space. Uh, what will happen if we increase from the number k to k plus 1? If k is 10, then k plus 1 is 11. If k is 12, it's 13, and so on. Uh, any number, integer number k, and increase by 1. Then we have the series 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to k and We add one more number to this series. And now n should be equal to k plus 1, which means if we look at the formula here, n equal to k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 1 plus 1. This will now be the denominator in, 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 uh, in this formula. n equal to k plus 1, then the formula will be k, uh, or the expression will be k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 2 and divided by 2. So, how can we prove this? Well, we have step number 3, which is the assumption step. We can assume if this formula is correct, then we have the first k numbers of the series can be replaced by this expression. And the first k numbers are still the same. This series is the same as this series. So, since we have proven the initial condition, we have assumed that this formula can, or this expression can be re can replace the uh, first the sum of the k first number. We just replace this series. K k plus one divided by two, and we need to add the last elements in the series here, k plus 1. And we can try to simplify this expression here, k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 2 will be k to the power of 2 plus 2k plus 1k plus This is multiplying these two parentheses with each other, divided by 2. And of course, 2k plus k can be replaced by 3k. So this is now the formula here, uh, on the right hand side. k to the power of 2, the square of k, plus 3k plus 2, divided by 2. We have the formula here. and the last element in the series here. So we can just now simplify even more, multiply everything with 2, then we end up with k, k plus 1, multiplied by 2, then the denominator will disappear, multiplied
multiplying this element with 2. And here, k to the power of 2 plus 3k plus 2. Okay, we are almost done. But some more simplification needs to be done. Multiply this expression k to the power of 2 plus k plus 2k plus 2 should be equal to like this. And now we can see, well, k plus 2k is still 3k. So these formulas are the same. This expression on the right hand side and on the left hand side are identical. k to the power of 2 plus 3k plus 2 is equal to the same, of course. And now we have proven that the induction step here, that this formula, which was in the hypothesis, is true when we increase by 1 from one particular number k. And since we have also proven the initial condition here, n is equal to 1, then the formula is correct. Since the induction says that we, the induction proof says that when we increase by 1, it is still correct. So since it is correct for n is equal to 1, it will be correct for n is equal to 2. And it will be correct for n is equal to 3, and 4, and 5, and 6. So for any number, any integer number, that's important, we only deal with integer numbers here, no fractions, but for any integer number n, we can use this formula instead of the whole sum up to this n. And of course it's much easier when you have a number of hundreds or thousands, it's so much easier to use a formula than to go through the whole addition of the whole uh, series. So this is, uh, this is also the example used in this uh, note. We find out that yeah, the left-hand side and the right-hand side will be exactly uh, the same. A bit different way to prove it than I did on, on the blackboard, but still uh, the principles are the same. So I will show a few more examples on this. And as mentioned, uh, this is, uh, well, you would get a problem of indu induction in your first assignment, and this is also a typical uh, problem, or at least a sub-problem, to be given in, in the exam, uh, as a start of a first problem in an exam, for example. So that's quite important to know. What is uh, also important to know is that the proofs of the formulas, when you have a formula, uh, for describing uh, anything, you need to prove it to make sure that it is uh, is correct. Even if it seems to be, it seems to be correct. You don't know it before you actually have proven it. Uh, okay, let's go to another example, and we still dealing with uh, these type of series or sum of series when we get to the forecasting topic in, uh, in this course, we will again use this series, we will use this formula instead of the sum of the series, and we will use also the formula we will find in the next example uh, in uh, the part regarding regression analysis, etc. We will come back to that when uh, we start on, uh, on, on different forecasting topics. Okay, we still have the four steps of induction, or actually the three steps and the hypothesis. Now, we have another sum of series, uh, which is the uh, sum of the series of the square numbers. 1 to the power of 2, square 1, plus 2. And of 
across 1, this will be 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 and so on. So we have to square the numbers and multiply them by itself. Also denote that to the power of, of t. This sum, the, the sum of this series, uh, the hypothesis is now that this can be replaced by the expression n multiplied by n plus 1 multiplied by 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And I will not show how we come to this hypothesis, that's a bit more advanced mathematics, but at least someone has found out that this is a formula which might replace the sum of the series of the square numbers. So, let's now try to check whether this is correct. The initial step, this is the hypothesis, this is the initial step, and still the initial step takes the basic or the lowest number lowest number is in the series 1 to the power of 2 which of course is 1 should be equal to n is equal to 1 multiplied by 1 plus 1 which is 2 and multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1 plus 1 2 plus 1 is 3 divided by 6, and 2 multiplied by 3 is of course 6, divided by 6, still 1. So the initial condition is also true for this example. So, then the assumption will be similar as we saw in the previous example. 1 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 2 to one particular number k should be equal to k k plus 1 to k plus 1 divided by 6 and here just replace the variable n with one particular number k we don't know the exact value of k but it can be whatever and now we need to prove whether this is correct or not. So go to the induction step, step number four. Since the first, uh, well, the series is the same for the first k elements. Add a new element here, the k plus 1 element. And now this should be equal to k plus 1, k plus 1 plus 1, which is k plus 2. And multiplied by 2 multiplied by k plus 1 to k plus 2 plus 1 which is 2k plus 3 divided by 6. So this will now be the expression on the right hand side when you replace the variable n with the number k plus 1. This is the expression. And as the previous example, the series is the same for the k first number. 1 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 2 up to k to the power of 2 is the same. And the only difference here in step 4 is that we add a new element here, k plus 1 to the power of 2. So then let's just replace the first part of the series with the formula we have found here in step 2. Uh, 
modify this a bit. So uh, yeah. k plus 1, k plus 2, to k plus 3. We can multiply at least the first two uh, parentheses, k to the power of 2 plus 2k plus k, which is 3k, plus 1 multiplied by 2 is 2, and multiply by the last parenthesis here, 2k plus 3, divided by 6. Again, we need some more simplification. Multiply the whole expression with 6, and try to simplify this a bit more k multiplied by k, k multiplied by 1, and multiplied by 2k plus 1, plus, since we are multiplying the whole expression with 6, we need to multiply this expression by 6, and just shorten out the two fractions here, and k plus 1 to the power of 2 is similar as k to the power of 2 plus 2k plus 1, which should be equal to, if you now try to multiply these two parentheses again, k to the power of 2 multiplied by 2k is 2k to the power of 3, k to the power of 2 multiplied by 3, three 3k multiplied by 2k, 6k to the power of 2 and 9k and plus 2 multiplied by 2k is 4k and 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. So we are getting closer but uh, we need to well keep track to all these elements here first. We need also multiply the last uh, parentheses. So now take the first element here, the first two parentheses. We end up with 2, k to the power of 3, plus k to the power of 2, plus 2, k to the power of 2, plus k, plus k to the power of 2 plus 12k and plus 6. That's the left hand side and now on the right hand side we can just find the k and the k's with, the, with the same power then we end up with 2k to the power of 3 plus 3k to the power of 2 plus 6k to the power of 2 is 9 plus 9 plus 4k which is 13k plus 6 and then we can check whether the left hand side ends up with the same as the right hand side 2k to the power of 2 1 plus 2 plus 6 k to the power of 2 should be 9, which is the same as we have here. And 1k plus 12k is the same as 13k. And at last, the single number 6 is of course equal to 6. So here we have shown that the left hand side in this example will also be identical to the right hand side. We have proven that this formula holds, it is correct for the initial condition. We have can then assume that it is correct for one particular number k and we have shown that it still we will be correct when we increase by 1. The first part of the series is the same. 
then we can replace that part with the formula here and add the new element with the number which is one higher than the previous one. Replace the ends, the variables in the formulas with a new value k plus one and check whether the left and the right hand side will end up to be the same uh, same expression here. Okay, and uh, well as mentioned, both uh, these two formulas I have shown now is used in the regression analysis, which we will come back to when we start on the forecasting part, because analyzing uh, graphs and uh, trying to to get the, the smallest uh, deviation from the different measured points from one straight line, then we use these formulas, the sums of the n first element and the sums of the square of the n first uh, element. So, we have now proven that the hypothesis is correct for these two examples we have got. I will show one medium and one small example more, not so much. This is a bit complex to, to well, keep track of all the, the case to the different powers. Uh, it should be difficult, but this, uh, well, we need to, well, to be very... Uh, look very thorough and don't make sure that you don't uh, write or forget uh, write anything wrong or forget anything. Um, it's not so much calculations on the, on the next example, but I will also show that one. formula, new series of numbers, which we should now try to prove. And here, let's now <coughs> have the hypothesis of a series of 1 plus 4 plus 7, and now the expression is like 3n minus This is the expression for these numbers. And we can see, we now we need to count the index number. So the index number here is number one. This is index number two. This is index number three and so on. And this is the index number n. So three n when n is equal to two, this will be three multiplied by two is six minus two is four. When n is equal to 3, index number 3, 3 multiplied by 3 is 9, minus 2 is 7, and so on. Next number will be 3 multiplied by 4, minus 2, 12 minus 2 is 10. So the series will increase by 3 every time. 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 10 plus 13 plus 16, and so on. This is now the series. And we will uh, check whether the this series, the sum of this series, can be replaced by the formula n multiplied by 2n minus 1. Okay, let's now first check the basic condition. Index number 1 should be equal to 1 multiplied by 2 minus 1, which is 1 multiplied by 1. Of course, this is equal to 1. So this is OK. This is correct. The initial condition is correct for this form. Next step, assumption. We assume that since it is correct for the basic condition, 
working, it is also correct for one particular number k. So just replace m with k in this expression here. 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 3k minus 2 is equal to k, 2k minus 1. Again, this is the assumption. Now we should check by induction if this is correct. And then we use k plus 1, which is the number 1 higher than the one we used in the assumption step. So we have on step number 4 here, the induction, we have 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 3k minus 2 plus 3k plus 1 minus 2. This is now the new element in the series. Should be replaced by k plus 1 and 2k plus 1 minus 1. What is very important, what many students used to forget on exams and, uh, uh, and, and assignments and so on, is that you need to keep track of the parentheses to do it correctly. So this is not 2k plus 1 minus 1, but it's 2 multiplied by k plus 1 and then minus 1. Make sure that the parentheses get uh, correct. Okay, we use the same technique as earlier. This part of the series is the same as the part used in the assumption step. Replace that one with the formula here. So, and try to solve it. K, 2K minus 1 plus the new element 3K plus 1 minus 2 should now be equal to this formula here which is K plus k plus 2 minus 1, 2k plus 1, when you multiply this uh, parenthesis and, uh, uh, and uh, combine it. 2k plus 2 minus 1. Again, multiply the parenthesis 2k to the power of 2 minus k plus 3k plus 3 minus 2 should be equal to 2k to the power of 2 plus k plus 2k plus And this is, of course, we find 2k to the power of 2 plus 3k plus 1. And let's now see if the left-hand side would be the same. We have 2k to the power of 2. We also have 3 minus 2, which is 1. what we can see here in the middle, minus k plus 3k is only 2k. And this is not correct. And then we have shown that this formula is not correct for describing the sum of this series up to 3 and minus 2. It is correct for the initial condition, 
1 is equal to 1. And since it is correct for the initial condi condition, we can assume that the formula holds for one particular number k. But when we try to increase from that number, we have found that the formula is incorrect. This is not an expression to describe the sum of this series here. So, then I have one small example left before we should continue and start on the, uh, on the forecasting part of, of the decoration. <coughs> and we have now seen two examples of induction, which is we have proven that the formula is correct. These two formulas should be also used later in the course. We have seen one example when we tried to prove a hypothesis which actually turned out, turned out to be not correct. So, I will just show you one uh, example which was a problem on the exam in 2009, some years ago, which uh, seems to be a bit complex. Uh, we have an hypothesis first. We should now prove that the series, still working with, with series, this is one, well, proving formulas for, for uh, sums of series is one typical way that the a typical example of problems that can be proven or uh, not proven by, by induction. But uh, there is also possible to use induction in, in other types of problems. But this is the, the problems we will uh, we use ex as examples in, in this course. And now we have a sum of a series of fractions. 1 divided by 1 multiplied by 3. plus 1 divided by 3 multiplied by 5 plus 1 divided by 5 multiplied by 7 and so on and the general expression here will be 1 divided by 2n minus 1 multiplied by 2n plus 1. We can see still to find the index number we should just ca count each element. So this is index number 1, this is index number 2, this is index number 3, and this is index number n. And we can see here that for index number 2, we can use that as, as an example, n is equal to 2, so 1 divided by 2 multiplied by 2 minus 1, which is 3, and multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 plus 1, which is 5. And this can be used for any of the index numbers in this series to find the values of the, uh, the elements of the denominator. This series is claimed to be represented by n divided by 2n plus 1, like this. Okay, let's check if this is correct. Initial step, lowest element here, which is index number 1, 1 divided by 1 multiplied by 3, is one third. And we should now check if this is correct to the formula on the right hand side. n is equal to 1. And then we have 1 divided by 2 multiplied by 1 plus 1, which is 2 multiplied by 2, which is 4 of course it's not good. So the induction 
fruit end here. We don't have to continue. The base case is not correct, and then we can just skip, and we can conclude that this formula is not correct as a representation of the sum of the series shown here. And as mentioned, this was an exam problem in 2009, and less than 50% of the students solved it correctly. Most of them used lots of time, try to go through the assumption step, try to prove it by induction, but not checking the initial step. So here, even if they made a well, good try, they found, found out at last by in the induction step that it was not uh, correctly anyway, which was of course the correct conclusion. This problem could be solved in half a minute, and they might have used half an hour instead. So this is an example, try to check everything, make sure that you do every detail uh, correctly, because it's very easy to uh, well, uh, do much of unnecessary work, and you also need to understand all the basic principles here, not only the induction part, but what is maybe the, the most important part, that the initial step should of course be correct. It's no use of trying to prove a formula which is correct by the, by the start. So that was all about induction, at least so far. Uh, you will get a problem of induction in, uh, or maybe two sub-problems of induction in your first assignment, so this is also, as mentioned, a part of, of the curriculum, and then we should continue on chapter two in the textbook, which is about forecasting techniques. And then we will use this PowerPoint file through some uh, uh, some general basics of forecasting and then I will show some uh, some formulas first for forecasting error and then try to, to show techniques for forecasting with the different uh, situations of, of, uh, of demand So, let's first try to answer this question here. What is forecasting? And of course, forecasting, the primary function is to try to predict the future. And since we are now uh, dealing with the uh, forecasting of uh, demand, uh, typical situation, you are uh, employed by a company and will try to have a, uh, find out how much will you sell or how much do you need to, to, to buy uh, in the future so this is the primary function of the of the forecasting here try to find techniques to predict the future and uh, of course why we are interested is this will affect the decision we make today if we assume that we will sell a certain amount of uh, of products in the next week, then we need to produce them or buy them for from our vendor, and we need to, to, to get the products so we are able to, to sell them. And if we are missing or forecasting wrong, then we might end up with lots of extra products which we are not able to sell, or we might have not enough to, to meet the, the demand from the market. So, some examples here. Uh, use forecasting in a job, we, well, we try to forecast the demand for products and, and services. Uh, also forecast availability of manpower, how many people should we employ, or how many people should go to work next Monday, for example. Uh, forecast inventory and materials will need, uh, we need daily to, to know that we have enough uh, in, in a production uh, factory, for example. This is the maybe the most important or most uh, uh, well obvious character.
characteristic, a forecast is usually wrong. I mean, it's very difficult to make a correct forecast, exactly correct forecast. Forecast can be good or it can be not so good, but uh, uh, it is very hard to find out exactly uh, how many troubles you will sell, for example. And a good forecast will then be more than a single number, but it can also give us a mean and a standard deviation. We expect to sell 50 products next week, but we have a standard deviation of 10. It will vary. And the standard deviation will, of course, say how much is the variation from the mean or expected value. We can also have a range that we know will not sell less than a certain number and not more than a certain number. But within this range, it could be uh, well, any random number or any uh, expected or, or also standard deviation between these ranges. Uh, also here, aggregate forecasts are usually more accurate if you try to combine forecasts for several similar products, if you are selling different products which are more or less uh, complementary. Uh, if you try to combine them, you will have a more accurate forecast. But, of course, the accuracy will erode as we go further into the future. It's easier to forecast for tomorrow than for one year from now. And forecasts should, of course, not be used to the exclusion of known information. You can have good forecasting methods and forecasting models, uh, but still known information is known. You have exact these orders, and then you should include them and try to forecast what is the remaining demand. When you know some information, you should, of course, include that in the forecast. And last slide before we take a break. Some points that makes a good forecast should be timely. You should know when the forecast and when the demand will occur. It should not uh, that it will occur uh, within some uh, months, for example, but if, if you I it's possible, exactly which day or at least which week, try to be as timely as possible. Also, be as accurate as possible, but not more accurate, because well, accuracy, th there are usually some unknown information and give an uh, exact number, which is probably uh, not uh, correct because of all the unknown uh, uh, unknown. Uh, assumptions or, or uh, things in, in, in the forecasting process, uh, you should not have, you should be as accurate as possible, but not more accurate than actually necessary. It should be reliable, it should also be in meaningful units, and present in writing, and then the method should be easy to use and also easy to understand and to explain to the all those involved. It's much easier to get uh, acceptance for uh, uh, for uh, uh, well, in increased uh, uh, purchase, for example, when you can show and explain the forecasting methods to all those taking decisions. Okay, let's take a 15-minute break and then. Come